What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. You'll probably see by the intro there and by the truck sitting behind me. This is our first time towing my new 24 foot deck over trailer with the crew cab OBS here. And I'm really excited because honestly this is probably going to be like, I don't know if this is going to be the exact tow combo I'm going to be using being that my Denali is rated to tow much higher. But for things around the ranch and stuff like that, being that I do daily drive the crew cab OBS, this is probably gonna be a pretty common setup. And I have to say, that right there is one good looking setup. Now it was raining up at the ranch this morning, and of course, right when I come down and pick up the trailer, it starts raining again. But doing a little test right now, making sure all of our lighting works because we really haven't had too many trailers hooked up to this truck. And I know when I bought it, like the guy that I bought that crew cab OBS from like three years ago was last minute wiring up the trailer plug in his driveway as I was picking the truck up. So. I've never really fully trusted it, but so far looks good. Looks like all the lights are working. I'm gonna get back in the truck now because it is actually starting to rain. I don't want my camera to get wet. And as you can tell, we need uh, just a slight drop hitch on this thing to kind of level that out. I'm sure if there's a load on there though, it'll actually sit pretty level. One thing I've never been sure works in this truck is the brake controller. Again, this was installed when I purchased the truck, so I'm not sure, but right now we're gonna test it. So most brake controllers have a little lever on the bottom. You'll see that one right there. And that lets you manually apply the brakes. So we're gonna see here, we'll start driving. I have no clue what this is set at. Let's set the gain kind of high. Oh, all right. And then when you slide this lever over, it should stop the truck just using the trailer brakes. Okay, well, that worked actually very successfully. So I guess the trailer brakes work great. And speaking of brakes and lighting, today we're actually taking the trailer over to Sergio's because you guys know I can't leave anything stock. And well, while the lights that came on that PJ trailer are really nice, we need more of them. So we're dropping this thing off at Sergio's today and we're gonna get this bad boy wired up with some more lights. What's up, man? You're a cameraman now, too? Yeah. I like the camera. What's up, Sergio? You ready? Uh, kind of. <laughs> kind of? <laughs> if it's not raining today, I guess. So this is actually planned for tomorrow, but the rain, somebody canceled on Sergio, so he's like, well, today's a good day to get a start on it. We anticipate it's gonna take probably two days to finish up. A lot of lights, a lot of wiring that's gonna happen on this thing, so. We really also don't have like a 100% game plan. <laughs> Obviously, one of the things we need down the sides here is a lot more amber lights. And we're thinking about going with the Phoenix T3s. So the T3s are what I also already have in the grill of the OBS here. And the cool thing about the T3s, there's a bunch of different modes on them. Strobe mode, dim mode, bright mode, running light mode. So the ones here, don't mind how dirty the truck is right now, but the ones right here, these are actually um, amber. And then we tied them into strobe. We run them as running lights as well. So it kind of gives that Raptor light look. Sergio, I just got a great idea. Seeing how good those look tinted. <laughs> you were thinking the same thing? Yeah. We should totally tint the lights on the side of this thing. Yeah, they'll be like they're not there. Yeah, we'll obviously leave these ones because you know we don't. Yeah. We yeah, yeah, we're gonna be all DOT compliant and whatever. <laughs> but uh, I think some T3s tinted going down the side will be sick. You want them also to flash? Oh, yes. Obviously, Sergio. I think we need to make them strobe. I don't own anything that doesn't strobe. We gotta make this thing a party at night. Okay, that's good information to know. Yeah. So I'm thinking. I don't know, what do you think? One, two, three, or four, or you think thinking four? Yes. My main reason for this is I have a lot of really dark roads leading out to the ranch, and I want to be able to see the entire sides of this trailer, because there's some roads where literally the mountainside is about that far off the edge of the road. So knowing where your trailer at is behind you is really nice to have at night. So I want to light this thing up, make it super, super bright, and then uh, obviously while we're here, we got to throw some rock lights underneath it, which I need to order from our buddies over at C4 Off-Road. And to Jack, I know you're watching this, uh, you beat me to the rock light on the trailer idea. Literally the day you posted that video, I had picked this trailer up and that was our first plan, but can't, can't always be first guys, can't always be first. I'm gonna tap off of the truck power because we currently don't have a toolbox with batteries. I am gonna add a toolbox with batteries as well as they make conversion kits for these jack legs here to make them electric. So you don't have to sit here and crank this thing a hundred times, even though like, the gear reduction in this bad boy makes it super, super easy to turn and lift up off the truck. We're gonna pre-wire knowing that we're gonna be putting a battery box in here at some point, but for now, everything's gonna get wired up off the truck power, and then we're gonna use a remote to trigger the strobes and the rock lights that we're gonna be putting up underneath. All right, there we go. This guy's safety. Yeah, let's, let's see if we're, this, the table will be our trailer. 
So the only thing with rock eyes is they have a, a nice wide spread. Yeah, this one. These, not so much. Surface mounts, which are six LEDs, and they have the 180 degree spread. Oh well, yeah, why don't we got that? Where are those at, Sergio? Uh, secret compartment. Aisle two? All right, we'll, we'll go to aisle two at IEP. By the way, you guys have been asking for it. Sergio finally made an Instagram account. What, Sergio, what is it? IEP underscore safety underscore lighting. So many choices, so many choices. Where's the 180s? Phoenix, we need some overnighted 180 degrees, uh, <laughs> surface mount, six LEDs. You know the good thing about this, Sergio, is we can pre-wire knowing that's coming. Uh, that's a good thing. That's a good Something. thing. One good thing and good advice for all you guys is let everybody know what you want in the future so they can be prepared, maybe not pay double for it. Can't hear you, Sergio. There's a mask in your way. I don't know. I get in trouble for not wearing them. You'll get in trouble for wearing them. We, it, it's, it's a no-win situation, Sergio. Are these the 180? Yep. So you see the difference on the optics? Oh, so geez, it's just Sergio, straight I up. I can't see, man. So it's a trade-off because you divide all the brightness of the light into 180 degree. Right. The good thing is that at a certain angle, you cannot see the other ones and the 180 degrees still have the same brightness. I think the 180 degrees is the way to go. That's not bright, that's dim. Oh, check. That's, that's bright. Go down. I don't want to go down. I've got a really bad headache already today. <laughs> see? Yeah, I see Sergio, they look <laughs> nice and bright, buddy. I learned something new today and I feel like, you know, Sergio told me, you gotta learn something new every day. So Sergio is gonna teach you guys something new today. In case you guys don't know, I might be the only dummy that didn't know what the, the ingress protection rating guide means or you'll see IP ratings on a bunch of lights, electronic yeah. things, right? Everywhere, you everything automotive and whatever that has electronics should have this rating. For cars, boats and all that, you have to be sure that you have the AP rating higher than 66 that was ip not ap i oh, sorry AP. so the ip rating scale here so you have two digits you got the ip and then the um two digits that you have the first one it's for solids you can see here i say solids so solids would be dirt dust anything that anything solid <laughs> i know it's a little hard to see on there but there are numbers down that side yeah. so that's going to give your first digit in the ip rating correct and then the second one will be for water so that you can see here they give you you can google this out just go a look for ip ratings guide or whatever and they'll give you like um each number what it means for the for again solids objects greater than 50 millimeters and then go slow smaller 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 and then six is the higher one which means no ingress of dust permitted like nothing at all nothing of dust or solids will go inside your lighting your controllers whatever you have that's working on your car and then the second one it's a little bit complicated with water because you can have water from rain or from a water jet or it's submerged they give you like a different ratings here and six is my limit for cars because that means you can still like pressure jet um, water into that device yeah. so if you're washing it with a pressure washer at an IP rating of six, or let's just say, if we go here, what do we want to be? We want to be six, six, six. So you want to be an IP rating of six, six means no dust is going to get in and you can safely pressure wash your vehicle and be fine. Now, if you got like a boat trailer or something like that, then you're going to want to be more in the, the IP rating of a seven here or six, seven, because that means you can be underwater for 30 minutes up to about a meter deep, which would be about a boat ramp. Yeah. Most companies that are high end, like, I don't know, Rigid, Vision X, even Phoenix, they have the IP, IP rating from 6.6 six to higher, depending on what product you have. Yeah, you might even be like a 6.9K, because sure. apparently 6, uh, uh, they didn't want it to be a 69. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. I've been wondering why they, it just clicked. That's why they put a K in there. They didn't want it to be 69. 6.9K. 6.9K protection from close range, powerful, high temperature <laughs> water jets. Yeah. But I doubt you're really going to see that very often. There's another... Um, trick or another problem with water is that it also takes pressure to absorb the water when you're working with lights or electronics or whatever when there's electricity coming through something it gets heat up so when you have heat up on a close environment it will like expand or contract the air inside so most lights even though they're completely sealed they don't work around where they have some way to release those pressures and right. as soon as there's a crack or even the pressure would crack your lens or the metal or the uh, gasket or whatever to start absorbing all the um, um, water or, or um, condensation yeah condensation so that's why you'll see a lot of like the cheaper chinese lights that are just completely fogged up on the inside because of that, that pressure change yeah 
Second, there's a tiny little hairline crack somewhere. It's just gonna almost yeah. work like a vacuum, and it's gonna draw the liquid in. And the high temperatures will, like all plastics, the main weak point for them is temperature. Heat up, cold down. Heat up, cold down will will um, decrease its durability. So, if you have some lights and you submerge it in water, don't don't go with those pictures like, hey, it's underwater and it's on, it's it's not still working and all that. That doesn't help because they what they do is leave it on all the time. So it's heat up, the air is out, but they don't turn it off inside the water. So there's where it starts to absorb because the pressure starts to condense and it's asking for more air. So it's really tricky. Even though you see the pictures of Chinese stuff, hey, it's underwater, that's not the trick. Like you have to be really careful with that. Exposing China, one light at a time, Sergio. <laughs> the more you know, IEP yeah. dash safety yeah underscore lighting yeah i done screwed it up i thankfully i put it properly okay. in the beginning of this video. i thought a lot of what names to put on there <laughs> we got the education on ip ratings from sergio let's get back to the trailer here the other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting uh some light pods to light up the deck of the trailer which will make things nicer uh for loading stuff up at night and i think this bar in the front of the trailer right here is going to be the perfect spot to just mount a couple of lights up underneath right here shooting out onto the deck we're going to be using some more phoenix lighting over here these are the phoenix am 900s work made brighter so these things are super bright um i've seen these on i actually have these on the back of are these the same ones these are the ones yeah, i have on the back, back. Yeah. yeah i have these on the back of the oh, single cap obs i actually do want to put some on this truck as well anything like that or you want to go on the deck i know wiring wise it'll be easier to go that way or do we hang them? So I think like that will kind of give like that tow truck effect. Working on layout and the only problem thing that's going to kind of screw with us is we're relying on where they put these reflective stickers all down the side of the trailer. Now we know these aren't put on perfect and they're not perfectly spaced out. They're close but they're not perfect. But visually if we put something perfectly spaced out in between that light and that light you're going to see how off these are. So we kind of got to use these visually as our spacing. Sometimes you can't use math and you got to go with what looks best by eye. Kind of like you can see here how Sergio's got them laid out. The blue tape would be the T3 light. One there, one there. Then you'll have the factory PJ light there. And then maybe we go, yeah, one more there. And the issue is that in a daylight you will see like good, but at night you will see only the lights. Because lighting wise, if you put a light crooked <laughs> at night, you're going to see like perfectly straight, perfectly straight crooked. Same with like spacing. But the good news is they'll be on a separate switch. So if they look like crap, we'll just turn them off. With the new Milwaukee tool, we got the heat gun. Fire it up. It's hot. It's not hot yet. Give it five seconds. I still got it. I still got it. I still got it. I still got it. All right, that's enough. <laughs> the good thing is they do run all the wiring inside the actual uh, channel here of the steel. So pretty much everything's internal. There's not really going to be too much water sitting in there. But it looks like they did a pretty good job of coating the inside of it too. Uh, we're going to do something similar. We're going to keep all the wiring contained internally here that way we don't have anything running up along the back side you can see up underneath these deck overs hold on hold on let's wait for the light adjust there you go underneath these deck overs they are super clean very simple sergio's over here right now programming the two modes that we're going to be using which is dim mode trust me i wanted to go bright but we wanted to match the lights that are already there so we're going to go with dim mode and then the strobe pattern that we're going to do sergio knows my favorite strobe pattern and look at this little trick little programming box we have here <laughs> i had to build those <laughs> it's really hard to be with your fingers touching the uh yeah ground so, wire. so basically the way these work is there's two wires power and ground power ground and then your your switching wire right for your mode function yes so you program this mode to whatever you want from the 19 patterns that you have on the other lights they have more modes like up to three depending on which one model you get and you can program one to be slow flashing then super fast flashing and maybe steady on for like a mark light whatever oh this is the oh shit, I just hit my head sergio <laughs> you got insurance sergio <laughs> yep see this is the uh trick to make sure they don't oh is that the pressure release yeah, pressure release oh dang look at that that's an ip67 rated right there yeah, so this allows um air to go through but no moist at all gotcha so that protects it and allows it to breathe yeah 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 and release pressure now this is the only one that lines up with the stake pocket I am, uh, I've actually ordered the drop-in D-rings that go into the stake pocket, so thank you for you guys that suggested those because this trailer doesn't have any D-rings. I don't want to weld anything onto this trailer being that it's already powder coated, so they do make really nice drop-in um, D-rings that drop into the stake pocket. They have a pin that goes in the bottom, then you actually have a D-ring to tie down stuff on the top here. So this is the only one that might interfere with that, but 
We've got stake pockets all up and down the trailer. I think we'll be okay if there's one that we can't use because there's a light in the way. Ahead and drilled his holes. That one is going to be for the wire. These two are going to be for the rivets that are going to hold on the T3 light. Currently, the lights are in here being uh, smoked out, basically. We're using the, where's the spray, Sergio? We're using VHT nightshades. This is what they sell you to tint like your tail lights and stuff on a vehicle. We've had really good luck using these on all of the Phoenix lights. So we're going to do a light tint on all of these, and they still are plenty bright to show through the tint. And that way they'll blend in really well on the sides of the trailer. The one thing we need to go get right now is a bigger waterproof box to house all the components, which are going to be our flasher module, which is right there from Phoenix to get our flashing. And then this little module right here is just like a little Chinese remote, a basic wireless relay switch kit to channel. And they make different variations of those. Um, this is just what Sergio had on the shelf right now, so that's what we're going to use. And that's going to control the flashers, which is going to be all the T3s down the sides. They're normally going to run as running lights, but then when we hit a button on the controller, they're going to be flashers. They're also going to control the work lights, which are going to be right there to light up the deck, and the rock lights up underneath when we figure those out. Eventually, we're going to hardwire the work lights to a switch and the batteries once we get the box and stuff installed on the front. So we're kind of, again, wiring everything to kind of be ready for that. It sucks that we don't have the box now, but we'll get it soon. Oh, shoot. Bro, is this the door? Sounds like getting shot at over here. It's a work truck. Oh, okay. Jeez. Hey man, you got a mask collection? You gonna build a pirate ship? Hello? Oh, shit. Morning phone call. Made it over here, Wheelie's Electronics. Trying to find us a box a little bit bigger than this. This place literally has everything. Electronics. All the hobby stuff. Commercial stuff. I think we're more in this world right here. Let's see what we got. That might work. What's down there? Oh. Are you an employee? Candy. Okay, Sergio, I got you, buddy. <laughs> I think this one's big enough. Uh, okay. There's the old one. Now, the one fun part about what we're gonna be doing with adding the strobes is Sergio needs, essentially needs to run two sets of wires because we want the strobes to alternate. I don't want all the lights to strobe at the same time. So what's gonna happen is every other one's gonna strobe. So these two are gonna strobe, then those two are gonna strobe. So it's gonna alternate. To me, it's a better look, much more professional look of strobe pattern, but it requires double the wiring. Pull the wiring That's through. Fine. Look at this. Look at this little trick right here, though. I like this little trick. Keep from losing yeah. your wires. Tricks of the trade. Tricks of the trade. IEP-USA.com. Oh, I need some. I need some orange. Go, go, go. All right, I'm happy right there. Is that enough? Yeah. All right. I want to thank Sergio for providing a heated lounge for his customers here. <laughs> Keep myself warm with the Milwaukee heat gun. His little legs got no meat on him. It's starting to rain, buddy. No me. Uh oh. Getting his initial wiring done here. All the lights are going to be wired up with butt connectors, so they're easily removable and swapped out if needed. Currently over here wiring up our strobe controller, which is going to be going in the box that we bought. Look at that bad boy. Look at yeah, let me change. Change pattern. This flasher will give you either um, positive or negative output. Gotcha. So while well, you do change the patterns and we'll go through all the cycle patterns in positive and then sending ground depending on what you want. It's a pain in the butt. The green is means it's sending ground right now to the uh, outputs. So we need it on positive. Yeah, so red. So we need it, we need it red. We're looking to get to red on the lights there. There we go, all right. Uh -oh. That's what I thought. So there's a microcontroller inside of each light. That is what makes the lights flash. So that microcontroller needs power and ground, and then it fires up. Once it turns on, then it will start doing the flashing. So when you have an external flasher doing that, if it's flashing too fast, it doesn't give you enough time for the microcontroller to start firing up and doing the flashing. Basically what's happening right now, go back to the other mode. So what you'll see is I like a fast flash pattern, and we're using an external flasher with these lights. So right now it's not an issue, but you'll see when it goes to a faster one, you're gonna see these lights come on kind of dim, no, we're still on a slow one. It'll do like a real dim flash and then like a brighter flash. And what that's happening is it's sending like a power on, a power off, power on, power off. Well, when that power on comes, it sends a signal to the, the microprocessor, which takes a second to fire the light, but then the power is off and the power is already back on. By the time that thing fires, you're going to get like this weird dim, then kind of strobe. And being that we can't use the internal controllers on these lights and use them as running lights, it means we have to use the external controller. So that's kind of giving us this issue, but I honestly don't hate that. Like, it's kind of working, Sergio. So now you can probably see it. We put it on the faster pattern here. See how it kind of, they're not full brightness at first. They're kind of halfway dim there. That's so, too fast for 
Yeah, so it's sending the signal too fast to these lights for the microprocessor to keep up. For now, you can see how they, they kind of alternate. They actually come up better on camera than they do in person on the alternating, being that it's just going so fast. And again, that gap of this signal being sent to the lights is kind of eaten up by the microprocessor. So you're missing a little bit of that alternating, but again, for what we're doing, that's perfect. So now that we have that figured out, our control box getting wired up over there. I'm gonna slam these boogers in, get them installed. Sergio's Milwaukee collections starting to rival mine. <laughs> I got you, Sergio. We'll bring some light out here, buddy. We'll get some light so we can actually see what we're doing. It's getting a little dark out. Now, while Sergio's dealing with stuff back there, uh, our good buddy Chris at C Bailey 619 who's standing right there behind me, got me a little birthday present here, or birthday present, Christmas present. And that is some LED headlights because all the lighting on this truck is converted to LEDs except for the headlights on this thing. So. Hopefully these ones that he got fit, we're gonna try them out right now. Now they're supposed to be plug and play for the OBS. The reason I haven't ordered uh, LEDs for this thing is because some of them have fans in the back, some have cooling fins. There's so many different types, I didn't know exactly what would work on the OBS and I didn't want it to trim or cut the housing or anything like that. So supposedly these ones just plug and play. That's what they said. Uh, the little pins that hold this harness into the back of the factory bulb, it only had one of the little retention tabs on it and well when I went to go remove that one last one that's been hanging on there it broke off because well plastic parts on old trucks get brittle so we ain't gonna have that but that's shouldn't be the end of the world here what do we got going on here though I don't like seeing bare wires coming off <laughs> goes like that I guess this is a uh, I guess we're doing a build your own harness day here really not gonna stay well either with those clips missing I guess it's supposed to clip on right there Electrical tape it is. This episode <laughs> with more rain. Sergio, run! run. Grab my controller. <laughs> it's plugged in, Sergio. Sergio, we're connected. Cut it, cut it, cut it. Cut it. <laughs> Every man for himself. Sergio, I got you. I got your drill, buddy. We're good. Uh -oh. We made it most of the day without rain. I think we did pretty good. Put the connector in the factory socket. They don't tell you that they gave you the crap to build it. <laughs> so no. So we're doing some testing over here. Okay, so being that we have to figure out which one of these goes. Yeah, high work. and low or what we have? Should be high and low. Low? Red is low. Green is high. Green, Green is high. high. Yeah, I figured Like that out. the wheat. Green right. is high. Green is high like like the herb. <laughs> herb. It might be low or high. They look the same. <laughs> Alright, next one. Go back. That's low. I think that's low, yeah, that's low. Yeah. We got this booger. Click. Click. Alright, we got it. We got this boys. Teamwork. Teamwork. There Click. Alright. Here we go, boys. We got lights. Look at that. Now we got all white lighting instead of some dim halogens over there. It's a way bigger difference. There's high. Low, high, low, high. All right, well, we got the lights installed. Looking great. Chris, thank you, buddy, for the Christmas present. I appreciate it. No problem, man. That was the last piece of the puzzle on this truck, lighting-wise, to get rid of all halogens. Yeah, some yellow lights in the, in the rear, but we'll worry about that. We'll worry about that next year. What do we got yellow lights in the rear? Just on the third brake light? Hey, since today wasn't actually the planned day to do the light install on the trailer, um, we're gonna have to continue. We're gonna have to continue tomorrow. I don't want this video to end up being too long, so you're gonna have to wait till the next video to see this thing fully lit up. But hey, the OBS looks great with its new LED headlights. So with that, we're gonna wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, you get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforwardparallel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah.